Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're answering another uh, pretty common question that we get asked here on the channel. Uh, why aren't more museum ships uh, preserved in concrete as a cheaper alternative that's less corrosive than sitting in water? Well, because it's not less corrosive. Concrete is terrible for steel. Uh, we're shooting this out here on the deck because we have in the past patched areas of the deck with concrete and this was a very common thing done on museum ships um, pretty early on. Olympia's entire deck is covered in concrete. Concrete is pretty cheap and really easy to lay down and for our deck where we've got all of these holes that are severe tripping hazards to our guests it was very easy to trowel in concrete and now it's uh, pretty flush with the deck and it's not too discolored compared to the deck when it's dry. The problem is concrete is porous and it's acidic so when it rains water gets into the concrete and it goes through the concrete and is held up against the deck. It doesn't dry because there's no ventilation there. There's nothing drying it out. So this concrete is holding that water against the steel. The water is not just normal fresh water that's fallen out of the sky. It has now leached some of the acidity from the concrete on its way through and it's holding that against the steel, causing it to corrode even faster than regular fresh water. The wood with the caulking in between should theoretically form a nearly waterproof barrier uh, that helps preserve the steel underneath longer. Uh, the concrete doesn't allow for that. It's a good uh, quick fix, but it is not a good long-term solution. And with museum ships, we are trying to preserve these ships for much, much longer than they were ever designed to be preserved. If you'd like to hear more about the work we're doing on the deck, check out these videos here. So that pretty well answers the question of why we wouldn't want to have concrete all around the ship. Um, while the ship is floating in salt water in particular, that is a huge threat to the long-term preservation of the ship. But she's operating in the environment she was designed to be in. Assuming you can raise the money to dry dock your ship every 10 or 20 years uh, and put fresh coatings on the underwater hull, and you've got some sort of cathodic protection, uh, your ship should be able to be preserved for fairly long term in the water. It won't be indefinite, but uh, Floating is definitely better than being grounded. The other problem of having your ship aground is that in water, gravity is pushing the ship down. The water is pushing up and in from the sides. It holds your ship's shape. If you put a ship in concrete, gravity pushes down and the concrete pushes back up but there's nothing holding in the sides. So the ship starts to collapse and buckle outwards and the concrete isn't rigid enough to keep that from happening. So eventually, over 100 or 150 years, your ship pancakes. In addition to all of the other preservation issues of the water gets into the concrete, is held against the steel um, or wood, depending on how the age of the vessel, of the hull of your ship. And now you can't do anything. You can't go in there and uh, repaint it. You can't put the ship in dry dock or anything. Your ship just deteriorates until it's gone. The Japanese battleship Mikasa is in uh, concrete. That vessel sunk or three times during her career and for a vessel like that perhaps preserving her in concrete is the best solution however it's not a permanent solution you you might be able to preserve that ship for a hundred years but it's not indefinite i've heard it argued that uh, 
ships that are leaking or have holes or badly deteriorated and can't raise the money to be repaired uh, should just be put on dry land. That way it doesn't matter. All right, that might buy you a few more years, but eventually gravity is going to destroy your vessel. The only cheap way to preserve your vessel long term is to leave it in the water. The more expensive option is to put it in a graving dock, and that may be the best long term solution. A couple of ships in the United Kingdom have done this, and check out this video here where we talk about uh, some of them and some other solutions for these ships. Don't have the money to dry dock your ship. You definitely don't have the money to put it on dry land. There are some ships up to about 2,500 tons that are uh, currently on display on dry land. Uh, the South Koreans have a destroyer. There are some submarines and destroyer escorts and PT boats and other types, smaller ships like that here in the United States. Uh, there's some older sailing vessels in the United Kingdom. Uh, and a World War I monitor and some, some relatively small ships uh, are preserved on dry land. Good luck doing that with a 57,000 ton battleship though. There are some museum battleships that are sitting in water but on the bottom. And that's not great for them either. If there's any sort of maintenance issue, how do you get that ship to a yard to do work on it? NAVC, the organization that oversees naval vessels that have been donated to be museums, considers any museum ship that is not still free floating to be in high risk because anything goes wrong and there isn't much you can do to save the vessel. Uh, so, so it's not going to sink any deeper if it develops a leak, but a massive part of the inside of that vessel gets flooded out, and uh, at that point it's way more expensive to replace things like that, uh, and some of its irreplaceable artifacts, but uh, way more expensive to replace that than it would have been to keep the ship afloat and dry dock her periodically. Thanks for watching. If you have any other questions about uh, preservation topics like this, we love to talk about them. Drop them in the uh, comment section down below. We're pretty good about getting back to those with some regularity uh, in the comment section or with shooting videos like these to address them to everyone. The museum receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and also from viewers like you. If you would like to donate to support the museum, check the link in the description down below. And as always, we try to make several new pieces of content every week. Remember to like, share, and subscribe so you're notified when we put out something new. Thanks for watching.